Hello, everyone. My name is Dave Cool. That is actually my real name. I am the Vice President of Business Development at Banzoogle, which I'll talk about in a second. But thanks for tuning in. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, 21 revenue streams for musicians. And it's going to go by kind of quick. We have half an hour and talk about a lot of different revenue streams. Um, but there's a lot of additional resources included throughout the presentation. So I'll, uh, I'll let you know how you can download the slides and so you can access and you know dive in a little bit more to each uh, revenue stream if you're if you're interested. So let's dive in. So speaking of which, if you'd like to download the, the slides, just go to Ask Up Experience's website, askupexperience.com slash banzoogle. You can download the full PDF presentation. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of additional resources and guides and blog posts throughout the presentation. Um, very quickly before we we dive in, you know, what is Banzoogle? For for those of you who don't know uh, what Banzoogle is, we're an all-in-one website platform for musicians. So you can easily build your own mobile-friendly website and EPK. Uh, you don't have to know any coding or anything like that. You can sell music, merch, tickets, all commission-free. You can run crowdfunding and fan subscriptions commission-free through your website. You can collect emails uh, and send professional email newsletters. And you can get support, um, live support, seven days a week from our team. We're mostly musicians uh, at the company, so chances are you'll be speaking to uh, another musician when, uh, if and when you do uh, contact us. Um, really awesome statistic here. Um, you know, Banzoogle members have now sold over $81 million worth of music, merch, tickets, crowdfunding, fan subscriptions, um, all through their websites, all directly to their fans and all commission free. Um, so that's a really amazing milestone and it keeps going up higher and higher and more quickly um, as time goes on, which is awesome to see. So if you don't have a website, if you're looking to build a new one, and if you want to try Banzoogle, um, if, as an attendee of the Ask Up experience, um, you can get a three-month free trial instead of 30 days, and you can get a 15% discount off the first year of any of the subscription plans. Okay, so let's dive in to revenue streams for musicians. Um, you know, it's amazing. Musicians have more control over their careers than ever before, so you can you know, record, distribute, sell, stream, uh, promote your music on a bunch of different and most, you know, many affordable, some free platforms as well. Um, but the biggest challenge still remains to make money and make sustainable income uh, as an artist. And whether it's through gigging or selling merch or licensing your music, it's more important than ever to diversify your revenue streams, not just focus on one or two, but really diversify your revenue streams to build a sustainable uh, income stream. Um, some of the revenue streams in this workshop uh, might be obvious to you, um, and others might be completely new or some that you forgot about or were thinking about and weren't sure. So hopefully, you know, throughout this presentation, it's just sparked some ideas uh, to, uh, of how to, you know, generate some extra revenue uh, in your own career. Okay, so starting with number one, CDs. Um, you know, it, obviously, CDs don't sell like they used to, um, but still millions of CDs are sold every year. And with the return of live shows, uh, selling CDs is a great way to make extra money at gigs. Um, and if you sign them uh, at, at gigs at the merch table, you, you, know, you give your fans a nice souvenir from the show. They're really inexpensive to produce. Um, and again, even selling them online, if you sign them and customize them in some way, you can charge a little bit more for that. And we had a Banzoogle member, granted they were you know pretty big YouTube uh, stars, they had a big following on YouTube. They did a pre-sale of their new album in CD format, and they signed 10,000 copies of these CDs, which sold out in less than 24 hours. We've never seen anything like it. It was incredible. So, you know, the CD format might be less about consuming the music and more about having that, you know, souvenir, something that the fan can hold. And if you, you know, um, sign it, autograph it, you know, a little personal message for the fan, it, you know, it makes it that much more valuable to them. Vinyl. So vinyl, obviously, the sales continue to increase uh, every year, uh, and they actually surpass the revenues generated by CDs for the first time in 34 years, which is pretty amazing. And in a recent Spotify survey, vinyl was found to be the top merch choice across every genre of music, which is incredible. So chances are your fans would be into buying vinyl. But, you know, before you do that, you might want to look, you know, cost it out maybe survey your fans, make sure that there are, you know, enough of them that you feel confident will buy. Cause 
producing vinyl is expensive. Um, so it's, it's not something you, it's, it's very different than CDs where you can buy a hundred or 250 for relatively inexpensive vinyl is a much bigger, uh, commitment, um, financially to invest in. So just do a little bit of research, but chances are vinyl would be a, a great merch item for your fans, whether you're selling online or again, uh, at live shows. Cassettes, um, you know, another blast from the past format, another physical format, you know, Cassette sales doubled during the pandemic in 2020. Uh, it's a very niche format, obviously, but it's a pretty unique item to offer to your fans at shows and to sell through, you know, online through your website. It, it's a, a new category that we had to add at Bansugal uh, because of demand, um, you know, for selling cassettes. So it's pretty cool. Uh, who knows if it'll last uh, for many years to come, but it's, it's something that right now seems to be making a, a strong comeback. Digital downloads, that's another format that, um, you know, it's not what it used to be. Obviously, we're in the age of streaming now, but, you know, just like CDs, digital downloads continue to be an important revenue source for independent artists. You know, last year, Bands Eagle members sold over $500,000 worth of digital albums directly to their fans, commission-free. If you look at some of Bandcamp's numbers, uh, the amount of digital downloads being sold through that platform. So again, it's kind of like CDs. It might not be about the actual consum consuming the music that way in terms of like listening to it or, like, or taking those digital downloads and putting them onto a device. It, it, a lot of it is about um, supporting the artist, so making it a, a purchase to help the artist because streaming revenues, you know, royalties are, are quite low. So you want to make sure to just have that option available for the fans that really do uh, want to support you financially. Um, if you don't have a website, you know, as mentioning, you know, selling direct um, commission through free through Bandzoogle. There's lots of different, obviously, platforms and tools, but Bandzoogle specifically made for musicians. We have a bunch of tools and resources and functionality specifically for uh, musicians uh, when it comes to selling uh, music. So if you don't have a website, um, these are the four kind of, there's more reasons, but these are the four top reasons to why you should think about having one. Or if you do have one and you're not sure, like, why do I have this website? Well, here's why. <laughs> so you own the address. So first and foremost, you're guaranteed to own that little slice of the internet. Your fans will always be able to find you there, uh, fans in the industry. And so it's incredibly powerful. Like as long as you keep renewing that domain name, you know, with Bandzoogle, you get a domain name free with each account um, and we maintain it for you, but you, you know, you own it and we transfer it to you should you ever leave Bandzoogle. So you own that little slice of the internet. You own the experience. So Hopefully not putting lots of ads and distractions and uh, links, you know, taking people away. I want to bring people and immerse them into your world um, uh, on your website. And there's no design limits, so you can really brand it how you want. You own the data. So where are your fans from, how they got there, you know, collecting their email data when there's sales, all of, all of that data that you're collecting through your website, you own it, you control it. Um, email, especially important if you're collecting email. It's another one of those things that you own it. You know, whether you're using MailChimp, you can upload that database to Banzoogle to, for our newsletter tool, or you can download it from, from Banzoogle and take it with you. Like you as the artist own that data, which is incredibly powerful. And again, you earn more money by selling direct it's commission free through Banzoogle, but there's other tools and, and platforms where the commissions are smaller than selling through, you know, the Amazons and, and iTunes uh, of the world. So if you're thinking about um, creating a website for the first time, or if you're thinking about giving your website a revamp, we have a guide how to make a website for your music. Uh, it's really comprehensive. It is not Banzoogle specific. So if you're not using Banzoogle, it doesn't matter. It's really just best practices for building a, a website for musicians. So definitely check that out. And if you're thinking about selling music online, or if you are, and it's not working for you, you know, you can read this guide on selling music online. And we talk about the different tools and timing of, you know, how to use those tools when uh, releasing new music. So revenue from streaming music, um, you know, obviously the revenue for a lot of artists is not um, significant, um, you know, but it, the music payouts can be small, but they do add up over time and can be for many artists, a significant source of revenue, but it's really about giving your fans every opportunity to support your career, including having your music available on all the major streaming platforms. And that's, that could be their way to support your career. And hopefully, you know, your, your, uh, new fans are discovering your music because you're getting out of the playlists and there's that whole side of streaming that's important to keep in mind of uh, fan dis music discovery, fan discovery. Hopefully those fans are, you know, Googling your your name, 
hopefully your website's showing up first and then they go to your website and, and maybe they buy some merch or buy a ticket um, to a show or a live stream, that kind of thing. So we've got a, a resource on getting featured on Spotify playlists. There's no guaranteed way to do it, but there's definitely some strategies you can implement to give yourself the best chance at getting out of display to Spotify playlists so that it'll, you know, again, help more uh, potential fans discover your music. Live shows. So traditionally one of the best ways to make money as a musician is live shows. And also one of the best ways to sell merch, you know, during the pandemic, obviously uh, that got disrupted, which we'll talk about next, but with the restrictions from COVID-19 pandemic lifting in many parts of the world, um, you know, musicians going back to playing live shows and touring, there's tons of different venues to play, you know, traditional music venues, bars, coffee houses, college universities, festivals, private events, corporate gigs, that kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of potential out there. The landscape has changed definitely post pandemic. Some of the venues might not be open that you were used to performing at. It's best, it's best to start your research earlier than you normally would have to make sure, you know, maybe the deals have changed, maybe the guarantees have changed, maybe they've changed the format of the club. You know, important to do that research um, before going out. And music festivals, you know, some are happening, some are getting postponed, some are getting canceled. You know, again, doing research, making sure that you can map out exactly um, the best strategy that you can, given the, the circumstances uh, we're living in right now. But we have a guide to how to put yourself in, the, in a great position to get booked by music festivals and also booking a tour. So what you should be thinking about and, and in what order, which is very uh, important. Making money with live streams. So during the pandemic, obviously so many musicians turned to live streaming uh, to perform for their fans and to engage and, and to, you know, to, to um, get that feeling of, of, of performing live uh, because, you know, gigs were canceled, tours were canceled. So, you know, even though live shows and touring are, are coming back in many parts of the world, you know, live streaming is still a very relevant tool in your toolkit to engage with fans and generate revenue because not all fans will be able to come see you live at a, at a physical live experience. So for all those fans that can't make it or who might not be comfortable uh, in that setting, you could still do live streams and still generate revenue through selling tickets to those live streams or just, you know, through online tip jars. You know, Bandzoogle members generated nearly $400,000 from live stream tickets and tips through our tip jar feature in the first six months of the pandemic alone. So, it, you know, it was a huge revenue generator. Uh, for our members when the pandemic first uh, hit. Um, we've got a guide, complete live guide to live streaming for musicians that goes over all the, there's so many different platforms. So we we go over some of the more popular ones, show you how the money works, you know, how, how it all, how they all compare to each other. So you can check that out, see what's best for you. Um, selling merch. So merch can be a significant revenue for musicians, both online and at live shows. And it's actually the top revenue generator for Banzigo members. Um, they sold over $9.4 million worth of merch alone through their websites last year, direct to fan commission free, which is really awesome. Um, you know, t-shirts, CDs, smaller items like stickers, buttons are usually really good sellers. You can also sell digital merch items like sheet music, video lessons, that kind of thing. And if you don't want to invest in inventory and, and any upfront costs, and you're not sure what your fans would like or buy, you can use a print on demand service like Printful. We have a integration with them and, and a lot of our members design some merch, put it on their website to sell, and you only pay for it once a fan buys. If they buy the t-shirt, print full, does, um, prints it, and then drop ship it uh, to the fan, and then you're charged uh, for that. So there's no upfront cost, no inventory to store, which is really nice uh, way to, to go about selling merch. We've got a guide to selling band merch online, which has a ton of ideas on different merch items and, and how to approach it with um, with online sales. Crowdfunding. So crowdfunding can be a great way to generate revenue for your career, but it's not, it's not new. Um, you know, it can cover the cost of producing and marketing your album, but crowdfunding shouldn't be treated simply as a way uh, to make money. It's a lot more than that. So it's really about connecting with your biggest fans and bringing them along on that creative journey with you uh, from the songwriting process. Hopefully you've started that early to recording and then to the release of your album, you know, communication and creativity are super important. And, you know, with a lot of planning, um, you know, the money will follow. Um, and we've got a resource on, on 
how to engage you know your fan base around a crowdfunding campaign we do crowdfunding through bands Google's commission free um we report sales to SoundScan if that's important for you especially here in North America and the the transactions happen differently than a lot of crowdfunding platforms because we don't take any commission you know the transactions go from the fan directly to the artist we don't touch it we don't take any cut um so you get that that money right away um from the fans fan subscription so this is something that's be, it's been around for a long time but it's it's a revenue stream that's becoming increasingly popular with musicians and especially when the pandemic hit we saw a huge uptick in our members using the built-in fan subscriptions uh feature at bands Google. so what are subscriptions it's it's you know fans subscribe directly to you either through your website or through another platform where they pay a monthly fee uh, a recurring monthly fee for access to various rewards and content it could be access to your entire discography plus any new releases it could be early access to new music works in progress um you know special discounts um we saw this a lot during the pandemic exclusive subscriber only live streams so instead of charging for your live stream or doing a tip jar some of our members you know started a fan subscriptions uh fan club through their website and all of those subscribers uh, got access to like a monthly uh, exclusive live stream show it can be incredibly rewarding for both you know you and your fans and it does it can help uh, create a really stable recurring uh, revenue stream for you so it's, it's definitely something worth checking out if you haven't tried it yet uh, we have a bunch of resources on this topic you know how to sell fan subscriptions um how to approach it you know this blog post called 71 ways to reward your fan subscribers there's a ton of ways to engage and and excite and and make it really fun for your fans to to be subscribers and even with all those ways that we came up with at bane zoogle we see our members doing all sorts of fun and unique things that are really unique to them and uh, as an artist and seeing their fans respond to that and it's it's really cool so check those out um okay so this is maybe the most important slide <laughs> in the presentation um given uh where this uh workshop is uh being broadcast so <clears throat> pardon me if you're a songwriter it's really 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 essential that you sign with uh sign up with a performing rights organization a pro like ASCAP I'm sure many of you are already ASCAP members but for those who aren't you know a PRO collects royalties on behalf of songwriters and publishers to ensure that they get paid for the use of their music. Uh, one of the royalties that PROs collect is public performance royalties. And so when a song is played on radio, TV, in music venues, uh, restaurants, arenas, malls, any other public space, um, they have to pay for the use of that. And so a PRO collects those payments and distributes the money to the proper rights holders. Now, you know, there's a ton more, obviously, on this topic. Um, but do yourself a favor, and if you're not already an ASCAP member, visit ASCAP.com. Uh, they do so much more uh, to help your career. So please, please um, check them out. Um, another organization to check out. So if two things from this presentation that you walk away from, um, if you haven't done already, is uh, join ASCAP and join Sound Exchange. So Sound Exchange collects digital royalties. So when your music gets played on non-interactive streaming music services so a non-interactive streaming music service is one that you can't choose you know the next song or jump around and, and you know it's being broadcast to you so that's like satellite radio pandora webcasters and cable tv music channels so if you're ever like in a hotel and like the hotel tv just has like dozens of different you know genre related um music channels um that's what that is so they have to pay royalties for broadcasting that music so sound exchange collects those non-interactive digital royalties for you um so if you're not a member it's free sign up uh, through sound exchange and there might already be money waiting for you they have lots of money millions of dollars waiting for the artist to come claim it so be sure if you haven't signed up yet be sure to sign up and, and check it out um live performance royalties so this might be one of the most underutilized uh revenue streams uh, for musicians and it's one that not many either know about or 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 look into further but it's 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 just another one of those things that it takes a bit of work a little bit of time but you should get into the routine of, of collecting these royalties because you know you can they're, they're owed to you so um you can earn royalties from your live performances so when you're performing original music at a licensed venue pros like ASCAP will pay royalties to the songwriters for those performances 
So this includes bars, clubs, theaters, and any other licensed venue that hosts live shows. So go to askapp.com. They have a section about um, performance notification and reporting live performances to learn more about it. But definitely something that um, everyone, every live performing musician should be doing. Uh, mechanical royalties, sticking with the royalties theme. Um, you know, mechanical royalties get paid to songwriters or rights holders for purchased music. But, so that includes CDs, vinyl, even digital downloads, and even music streams. So in the U.S., it's pretty simple. It's, um, you know, retailers include those royalties with payments to the digital distributors. So if you're, you know, you're, if you're aligned with a digital distributor, which I'm sure most of you are, you're getting those royalties for those um, purchases and streams in the U.S., Outside of the U.S. is where it's a little bit more complicated. So those royalties get sent to royalty collection societies who then distribute the royalties to music publishers. To collect those royalties outside of the U.S., you would need to register with each royalty collection society, which, of course, you can do, which will be super time consuming. Um, but you'd be ensuring that you'd be getting all of that money um, and without giving up any kind of like fee or, or percentage. Um, but there are publishing administrators out there that for a small fee that in my opinion is way worth uh, not having to do all that legwork yourself. Um, so you can just sign up with them and they will collect those uh, mechanical royalties on your behalf. So one of those publishing admins is also a digital distributor at CD Baby. Um, they have a great resource. Their blog is great to begin with the DIY musician blog but they have this post called what is a mechanical royalty that kind of explains a little bit more in depth what they are and how to go about collecting them. Licensing your music. So this is probably a topic that is very relevant to a lot of you watching this and who attend who are members of ASCAP and who have attended the, the um, conference in the past, you know, getting your song placed in TV, film or commercials, you know, those productions need to pay a licensing fee and they actually need to pay two. So it's the one is the master use licensing fee for the use of the recording. And the other is a synchronization or sync licensing fee uh, for the songwriters and publishers. So the fees can vary greatly. It really depends on the budget of the project and how much they really want your song, your particular song. So, you know, obviously composing for music and film and television, licensing your songs, it can be a significant source of revenue for a lot of musicians. And it's, it's a whole other world. Um, and it's one that, you know, it's worth looking into. I'm sure a lot of you already are in this world um, just to learn about it and make connections and, and, you know, hopefully we all get to see each other at the next in-person Ask Up event in, in 2022. It's a great place to make connections and network and, and learn a little bit more about this side of the industry. Um, here's some extra resources to learn more about music licensing, but CD Baby has a post called How to Be Wildly Successful at Licensing Your Songs. And this is a post written by a Band Zoogle member named Nat J. Um, she is an independent artist. She has no representation. She is incredibly successful at licensing her music. It's really inspiring. So she wrote this post for us called Five Reasons Indie Artists Are Primed for Sync Success, which goes over kind of the approach as an indie artist for sync licensing, music licensing. Um, she's had an incredible amount of success doing it herself. So please uh, check it out and check her out. There's a link to her, her website on that post. And then we have another post, just all the different ways, you know, the different places that need uh, music to be licensed. Uh, so you can check that out on our blog as well. Social video monetization. So this is a relatively new one. Um, you know, you can actually earn money when your music is used in videos on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Triller. Um, you know, the fees vary depending on the platform. Uh, so be sure, you know, your digital distributor can collect that revenue uh, for you. So be sure you've opted into their social video monetization program uh, to start uh, earning that that revenue. You know, the other part of this is YouTube. Obviously, they're uh, kind of a social site, but it's it's obviously a lot more than that. So if your music is used in a YouTube video that is running ads, uh, YouTube pays part of that ad money to the rights holder of the song. That includes videos on your own channel, uh, as well as videos using your music, you know, that aren't on your channel. So again, your digital distributor can collect that money uh, from YouTube and, and distribute it to you. Um, YouTube monetization for musicians is a really comprehensive guide written again by CD Baby. Please check it out. There's obviously a lot more ways to generate revenue uh, from YouTube. Um, so 
check that out. Sponsorships. So we've got a few more here. Sponsorships. If you've built up a fan base, um, you know, music companies and even major brands might be willing to sponsor you to reach those fans. You know, you can offer visibility on social media, your YouTube channel, your through your email list, you know, and more. You see, you know, probably the most common is like seeing uh, YouTube channels that are sponsored, YouTube videos that are sponsored, uh, Instagram posts. That's like a paid partnership, that kind of thing. So if you've built up a fan base on social, you know, that's something that you could potentially uh, monetize if you're if you're comfortable with that. Um, our friends over at Flypaper at Soundfly's blog uh, wrote this great uh, post, how to contact brands for sponsorships and collaborations if you want to learn how to, a little bit more about how to approach uh, companies about working with you in that way. Uh, music grants. This is a big thing. I'm, I'm up in Montreal, Canada. Ben Zugel's based in Canada and Ottawa specifically. Um, you know, music grants are a big part of our ecosystem, music industry ecosystem up here. Um, you know, so if they're available to you, they can be an excellent form of financial assistance uh, for musicians. Uh, they're usually given out to help with writing new music, uh, recording, or even going out on tour. So on our blog, we wrote guides to the uh, gr uh, different granting systems in the United States, in Canada, of course, uh, in the United Kingdom, and in Australia. So if it's something that you haven't tried yet, it's worth exploring. If you live in any of these four countries, we you know we have these guides, but I'm sh you know there's grants in 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 many many countries that uh, are available to uh, to musicians and creators. Um, last couple of revenue streams here. So you know. And these ones are about like, you know, working with other people. So doing session work for other musicians. So, you know, it's another way to make some extra money by um, kind of lending your skills, not lending, but you're going to be paid um, to play your instrument or sing for other projects. And it could be uh, in studio is probably one of the most common, but it could also be playing live and even going out on tour, depending on your own schedule. So it's something um, a lot of missions, musicians do to, you know, augment their income. A little bit. So, um, friend of ours, Ari Hurst, and many of you know Ari's take, his blog, his books. Um, he wrote this great post called 11 Ways to Get Hired as a Freelance Musician, which gives some great advice if you're looking to do that, um, how to go about uh, doing that, and um, how to approach people and, and that kind of thing. So, and last but not least is teaching music. So, it's it's again another great way to generate revenue is just teaching your instrument whether it's guitar drums uh your voice singing you can supplement your income and also hone your craft at the same time because by teaching you're really going to be you know practicing more yourself so you can get started by you know even creating just a small mini course based on like your skill set and then offering one-on-one -on -one music lessons uh, in person if you're comfortable and if that's possible or you know online, of course. And uh, Brie Noble, who um, is a friend of Van Zugel, wrote this great blog post for us called How to Get Started Teaching Online by creating a mini course. And then, uh, you know, you can expand it from there to to generate more revenue through through teaching if that's something that you're interested in. So again, um, I hope that, you know, some of those ideas, some of those revenue streams sparked ideas for you. I hope it was helpful. Um, just kind of see it in, in, a, in a list like that and obviously there's a lot more to each one of those revenue streams and there's a, again a ton more resources and links to guides and, and blog posts for more information so you can download the slides so you can um, get all those resources at askapexperience.com um, slash banzoogle and again if you need a website um, if you don't have one or if you're thinking about changing Again, as an attendee of Ask, Ask App Experience, you can get um, a special discount, uh, extended free trial, plus that first year discount. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Ask App, for, for having us. And I uh, hope you're all safe and healthy and hopefully see you all uh, in person uh, in 2022. Cheers. Take care, everyone.